everybody it's sam here thank you for watching today so i've got this little sweet dispenser or candy dispenser to share today this one's kind of evolved from the tea bag dispenser which i shared maybe a couple of weeks ago i'll link that one up here it's a really fun one so if you want to make them matching or those two together then i think they will sit perfectly because whenever you have a nice hot drink you want a sweet treat to go with it well i know i do anyway but um i've got this one here you don't have to cut all of the sides out if you don't want to also i'm going to mention it if you do the hole punch this piece to make this little twist here which will open the front you want to do that before you put it all together you can do it when it's all together as I do in the video but I think it's best to do it when it's flat so I'm going to put a little more note up in the video but I just wanted to mention that now you could also have this as a velcro closure if you would prefer but I quite like this little disc here and then this piece falls down so you can keep it open like this and then you can see there you can just take the sweets out and enjoy to your heart's content and then just close it up and just twist round the little disc there to hold that all in place. You've got there, you're a treat. I can see this working for all occasions. Christmas, Easter's gonna look wonderful, filled with little mini, um, filled with little mini eggs. And also for Halloween, I can see it's a really cool table favor. So lots of ways to use this one. It's pretty straightforward to make as well. So let me show you how. So I'm gonna be using paper from this lovely pad here. So it's a 12 by 12, simply made crafts. This is the one that I said when I shared this in my Creative Craft Products video. I was going to use it on a gift bag, but I actually think it's going to look really nice for this project. So I pulled out that one there. So you're going to need a piece of 10 and a half by 12. If it's directional, make sure you've got it along the, it's the right way up with the 10 and a half width. Okay. So first of all, we want to score at two and a half, five, seven and a half and then ten let me just say that again two and a half five seven and a half and ten you'll have a half inch tab now that you've made here rotate it so that's along the bottom and then score it two and a half nine and eleven and a half okay so that's all the scoring so i now want to cut windows into the front and the back you could do it on all four sides and I am still thinking whether to do that or not because I think it would look good. You could just also do it on the front and you can also leave it out. So it's just a, you know, a solid tube. So it's entirely up to you. But what I'm going to do is flip it over because it's going to be easier for you to see. And I'm just going to fold and burnish all of these score lines. So again, it's just easier for you guys to see. So I've got the half inch tab on my left hand side and the half inch tab on the bottom because this is going to be the base that that's going to be the tab for us to kind of connect the little closure. So first of all, you want to cut up all of the score lines along the bottom just to the what would be the second score line. So you're cutting past this fold and then up to this one, making sure you've got that half inch on your left there. So just neatly. Cut up all of these. Just pretend you're putting this together. You want the folded piece to be on the back left. So this one's going to be the front. So if I just hold that one, open it back up. So it's the second one in. So you've got this kind of little tab, but then you've got this square. It's the second square in. You want to remove that one completely. So I'm just going to fold under all of those for a minute, just so I can get in. And we're just going to cut that one away. There we go. And we're going to cut some more of that in a moment, but I'm just breaking it down. I'm going to use my smaller snips just to get into these areas. So that one we're going to take away completely. Okay. And I've just cut a little wedge off of there and then come all the way along up to this one here and just cut that piece away. And then again, just a little wedge off of that one. So we've got the tab, okay? So you know, you should have something like this. Then we can cut down all of these score lines just to the first one. So just as you did before, nice and neatly, just cut all the way down there. Then we want to remove just the tab end on these two at the bottom. Leave it on this outer one here. So just snip right across there, like so. 
and then just take just a little wedge off of the corners here so now when you put this all together got the tab back left there we will fold those two under and then this one you want this flap to be at the front so now we need to remove our space here so it's kind of up to you really how much you want to take away i'm thinking of one and a half but looking now i might do two i'm going to do one and a half but you might want to do two so i'm just marking one and a half inches up on the score line of this piece here So, and then what I'm going to do actually is add a score line into that because I think it'll make it easier to cut. I'm actually going to use this one here and I'm just going to find my pencil mark which should sit in a track which it does and just join those two pencil lines. Okay so you can see that section and then I can just cut that away. So you cut up each side like I'm doing here and then rather than cutting across there well actually no you might want to remove it depends if you're going to make your acetate window or not but you could just fold that now and stick that cut a little wedge off of the side but just stick that there it's only going to add more strength um so I think all I need to do actually is I'm just going to cut mine so I've got about an, half an inch like so and then just take a little wedge because you don't want it to catch on the folds and I'm just going to fold that under because I've still got all of that space to cut the aperture out if I do so on the front so I'm going to grab my Kalau glue I'm going to use the Kalau as much as possible on this because it's a 3d make it would just add lots of strength so just a little bit of glue there and just fold that one over Okay, so now again, bring it all around, fold in those pieces and that one. And you can see now, yeah, I think one and a half is plenty space for um, your treats to fall out there. And then this is where we're going to have the little door that's going to close, which is going to come up, I'd say, about there. And then all of this is going to be for the top. So I always like to fold the sides in first and then the back and then the front. Because the idea is, is you'll fill it up from the bottom so it will be completely sealed at the top and then you, we're going to have like a nice flower or something on there. So I think I'm happy with how that's all looking. So now I want to cut my acetate windows. So I think I'm going to have one and a half by five and a half windows on these three here. So to do that, I need to mark half an inch in along the top here and along the bottom and then do the same marks here so just come up half an inch come down there like so and then just join up one of the marks can always rub these out afterwards however once you fill it with treats you're not really going to see all of this so that's now my window one and a half by five and a half so i'm going to repeat that on these two i'm going to cut this one now with you and then i'll just speed the rest of it up so you want to make sure you've got a very sharp cutting knife and I like to use my triangle ruler here just so my fingers aren't right by the um, paper. Push down nice and strong, make sure you've got a cutting mat and then just try and do it in one cut like so and then do the same this one. And then I just need to join these up. And you want it so that they just pop out. So 
bag. So perfect. Then that's going to be reinforced with construction acetate. So that's what you want to repeat now on these two if you're going to be doing like I am. You might just want to do it on the sides. As you can see that's I just it'd be nice to see all the treats. So it's an, it's a completely optional how many you cut. So I've cut them all out and I've cut that one as well. So right now it's very flimsy. So I'm just starting to add the acetate. So this one I ended up doing again, one and a half and I've done it by three and a half. So I've just started putting my tape all around here and then I've got my acetate. The one I'm using is Central Crafts A4 Clear Acetate, it's 240 microns. So it's a nice strong one. And I've cut these pieces to two by six that one you'll want to cut so it's two by i do four and a quarter so those are all now down to clean them, just spray some rubbing alcohol surgical spirit onto some kitchen towel and just rub it over your acetate and it will take off any sticky marks and things like that. So you want to kind of do that definitely on the inside because we're going to stick it together next. So I was actually out of my rubbing alcohol, but I've got some of my antibacterial hand gel. Just squeeze a little bit onto your paper towel there and then just blot it so it's not, so it's almost absorbed into the tissue and then just rub that over. You can see I just did that. And it's so clean and shiny. Any other marks now on the outside, but it's pointless me doing that yet until I've stuck it all together. Because this one is going to stick onto the end here, that is half an inch, but I don't want any of it to be visible at all. So I am just going to trim. If you've not cut an aperture into that, then you don't need to do this. But I am just going to trim a little bit more off of this piece there. Like so. And then I'm going to use my Kalal glue now because that will fit into that area. All the way along there, just spread that out. And I'm just going to lay that down on there like so. And then lay that one over and it will all line up. Just give that a minute to dry. Okay, so I'm happy with how that's all looking. So then I'm going to do the top next. So this one is the one at the front is going to be the last one you stick down. So the other three might have been easier to have done this bit before I put it together. But you just want to cut just a little bit off of the edges there again, just to keep it all nice and neat. Okay, now I need to start bringing some of the strength back into the box. So I'm just popping one of the sides in first, then the other side. Then the back one. And then the top one. And that's the front one there. So you have that nice folded piece at the front and then just pop it upside down and with a ruler you can just get in there okay so that's all the top secure and i've stuck the base as well so you just stick your sides in and then stick that one down so you've got the lip facing there i'm going to cut a piece of two and a half squared in this same pattern to just line the bottom there because i think it'll look quite nice if the sweets do obviously get eaten and enjoyed and you start to see the base i think it'd be nice to have this pattern so whilst that's drying, I've got these pieces to start to create, you know, create the little drop down. 
So you'll need two pieces of one and three quarters squared card. I'm going for this hot pink because I'm going to cut flowers in the same colour to go on the top and have the leaves kind of coming down and stuff. So a quarter on one side and then rotate and do a quarter inch again. So you've just got score lines for me on that top left corner. OK, leave this here. If you then fold and burnish those ones. In fact, you need to do your middle score line as well. So let's just do that one. Just make sure you've got that kind of crossover bit at the bottom. I'm just going to line up with the three inch track there. It doesn't matter which one, but just find one that you can line it all up with and then just score right down through the middle. So that's going to become a valley fold. And then these are going to be mountain fold. So what you want to do is remove the corner square that you'll have like so. And then just cut a little wedge on all of these corners here. Okay, so you've got something like that. And then you just want to cut right across from corner to corner. So you have that effect there. Now, I guess you could cut a bigger square and maybe get two out of the square. But whatever way you want to do it, you want to have two of these pieces. I've then got these pieces here, which are two and a half by two and I'm going to stick them together just so it's nice and strong because it needs to hold obviously the um, the weight of the sweets when it's filled up so you might want to add three layers of this and this is the craft perfect card that I'm using here so it's about a 220 GSM 216 something like that I think it is but I think that's going to be enough but you you judge it because this is going to stick onto this tab here with the side pieces on and then you're going to have your sentiment on there or you might want to stick your sentiment somewhere else still a lot more decoration and stuff to do so I'm just going to let that dry so I don't want to start sticking anything to it yet until that's completely secure so whilst that piece is still drying you're going to have one of these stuck on each side with the tab so that one's going to stick in there and then this one in there now because I've got some acetate in there I'm going to add my red tape to this side but I'm going to use my Kalau glue to attach the other pieces. So just pop it and sit them like that. I've got my tape on the top one there, so I'm going to do it on the top one on this side. Like so. Now I'm thinking it might be easiest to stick these pieces onto this whilst it's free from this, because I think it might get a bit fiddly. So I'm now going to use the Kalau glue on this one. I would usually use my quick grab glue on the small tabs, but because I want this to be nice and strong, I'm going to use this glue here. And you want to stick this right down into the corner to get the score line so it runs right down in that corner. So you can see where they, if I just fold that, you want that corner to sit at the bottom of this. And then again, Take the other side that you've not popped the red tape on. Just spread out glue. And you're going to do the same with this one here. And just make sure that all folds over. So you've got a nice right angle there. So they're all going to fold in like this. You can see how that's going to work when that closes and it's going to meet at the top there. Next, we want to pop some glue here because that's going to stick in there. So I'm going to take a little wedge off of each corner there. Like so. Put my glue on there. And then just sit this one down and just make sure that it lines up at the bottom. And just fold that over you want that to be nice and flush with the bottom there now if you don't like the join there because you will see that if you've got all the sides open like mine then i would cut another piece of pattern paper which i think i'll do now i think i'm going to line the base and just cover that so you'll want to cut yourself a piece that is again just under two i do it just under two by two and a half
So just take the backing off there, make sure it's all folded down like this. And then if you just, I do this one this side, if you just hold it up there, you just want to make sure that that lines up and then just push it down. It's really easy to be able to get your hand in there. You'll see how that's now going to close once we pop our little closure on there. That works really well. And then again, pop that one just under there, like so. Now we've got our little opening, kind of like a little drawbridge. I think that looks really cute. And it's not, I mean, it, the weight of the sweets is going to push it down a little bit, but it's going to stay slightly kind of raised like that. So it will keep all the sweets in. But I think that looks, yeah, I think that looks really sweet. <laughs> okay, so I've just been thinking about how I want to do the closure. So I've just punched myself two half inch circles. I've just used my circle punch. If you don't have a circle punch, then just cut yourself a little square of a similar you know half an inch squared size if you are using a square then have it in the diamond orientation when you punch the hole so that shape there i did do a test with this one um the hole needs to be higher so that's why i'm just doing this one again so i'm going to punch my hole you know as close to the top as possible but because i've done the two layers that's going to become quite a strong little disc once that glue dries. Okay, so I'm quite close to the top there. Then you need to make a hole in this piece. This is gonna be best to do before you put the box together. So I'll put a little note up in the video to say, punch your hole before you then put the box together. But you wanna punch your hole about seven eighths of an inch up from this piece here. I did have a bigger brad, but I'm gonna use a smaller one. So that sits in there nicely. So I'm just opening up the split pin. Like I said, it'd be much easier to do that when you um, before you put it together. But you see now that moves and then you can just slide that around like so. There we go. And it's going to hold it in place. So that works how I wanted it to, which is good. Okay, so there is the finished dispenser. So I've added a heat embossed sentiment. I did stamp it first, but I didn't like it. So I've heat embossed the sentiment, got the pretty flower there. The base here, I've just stuck a few layers, about three layers of three and a half squared cardstock, just like I did on the tea dispenser. And I just attached that to the bottom. And you can see there when you turn your little fastening, that will open. And then you can fill it with your treats. So I've got some lovely treats here so i've got some maltesers and these are the coconut chocolate quality treats so i'll probably change this i'm thinking of filling it all with the pink lindor ones which the cookies and cream which are just gorgeous but you can see it's really easy to fill that up if you'd rather keep the top open again you can there's lots of ways to adapt this and you might want to do the tea caddy size and then add this bit so it's entirely up to you but i mean you just saw how much i've added and there's still I'll just shake that all down you've still got you know about a third of the space still left there and um, yeah and you can see it holds it really well and then just open that up and then you can start kind of bringing or pulling the gifts out like so and you see they're not going to go everywhere I think it's lovely. Really, really pleased with this one. And um, I know if I had it on my desk, the sweets wouldn't last that long at all, but um, it is gonna look lovely. 
just displayed on my mum's desk. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun little sweet dispenser or candy dispenser from me today. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this one. I can't wait to see your versions. I think this is going to look wonderful as a Christmas gift, you know, filled with sweets, table favours. I can see it for Halloween. Easter is going to be great, filled with mini Easter eggs. And you could even put some small little gifts in there as well, like all, you know, wrapped up and stuff, like little bits of jewellery or makeup and stuff. So, yeah, I really like it. And like I said, it's up to you whether you cut all of these pieces and um, whether you keep the top open. You could have a Velcro fastening there at the bottom. You don't have to have it like I've done it. So there's quite a few ways to change this up. So as always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed today, then maybe watch some of my other tutorials popping up now. And if you haven't subscribed, click on my face. And then if you hit the notification bell, you'll be able to subscribe, but then click the notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I upload something new. See you all again soon. Bye.